Hello again, this is Francis from McCaffrey's Crafts and today I'm continuing on with my series about Black Torn and Irish faction fighters. And again, let's head back to the, the 1800s and today I just want to just give um, just some background to, to how the kind of government was set up and uh, introduce like about how, how magistrates were. Um, so like if you think back in, in Den, the kind of the kind of hierarchy structure of power was like, you know, you'd have like the Lord Lieutenant and the chief secretary and the undersecretary and they were based in in dublin and also the heads of the uh the protestant state church church of ireland but for faction fighting i think it's more relevant to look just right now at the the county level like uh like whether it's kerry or tipperary or limerick or, or any of these counties and the local government and a county level was usually made up of the county lord lieutenant the deputy lieutenant and magistrates and what i kind of want today is just to kind of have a look at magistrates and and how they kind of viewed it because they they kind of played an important part in the development i suppose of the faction fights um like magistrates could be appointed no experience they could be on recommendations you know it was just they were just okay you want to be magistrate okay there you go like it, it, it was done very disorganized, and like at the close of the um the kind of the eighteenth century, uh, at sorry, yeah, at the very end to say the seventeen hundreds, start eighteen hundreds, like um, unpaid magistrates, and they weren't really paid, um, they were very disorganized, they were corrupt, but never, nevertheless, um, they were the traditional system at the time for, uh, maintaining order they had to make sure that there was no civil unrest. Like that was their job, that was their duty. Um, and, you know, this depended on the constables that they uh, uh, that they were in charge of. And this was reinforced by, by the military. So the magistrates were, think of them as like, you know, the guys who had to try to keep lo law and order more on a local level. But these guys were just anyone who was appointed, like they had no experience, no, no, nothing at all. Um, so if I found uh, found that um, quite quite interesting, like you could basically, at the time, uh, you know, like the Irish administration could appoint a magistrate without any recommendation and decline, you know, to appoint anyone as well. If you want to be this guy, nah, I don't like him. Let's let's pick pick someone else. Um, these these appointments like were made on the recommendation of the county. Lord Lieutenant. So they they were the guys who were, you know, they were mostly Protestant. Uh they were mostly men. Um they owned, you know, some some property in the area and they usually came from a professional or commercial type of background. Like they're business guys. And, you know, mostly like they weren't really educated. Um and actually this is very interesting. The majority believed that letting the factions fight it out without police invention. So the magistrates, they were like, let the boys fight away with sticks. We don't care. Um, they didn't think there was any need for them to interfere with the British military. They didn't think it was any to interfere with constables uh, at all. Um, so I thought that was quite interesting that the magistrates just didn't give a flute about anything at all. Like they didn't care. You know, they said, you guys fight away and, and do that. But it's kind of like um worth noting here because um look at the at the there's a there's a there's no time that was more anti Irish and especially anti Catholic than during uh, Robert Peel's period and he was the chief secretary from eighteen twelve to eighteen eighteen. Um Peel was a young guy, he was only twenty four uh when he took over the uh the office and he believed that the magistrates um could only be prevailed upon to do their duty through the availability of a strong and effective police force. So he had a different type of mentality. He wanted, you know, the police to be a bit harsher on, on people. Um, and again, you know, he had he, he had um, this much in mind when he formed what was called the Peace Preservation Force uh, in 1814, uh, the year in which the first, uh, you know, kind of, you know, type of magistrates 
of the first uh, st stupendatory it was called or was it stupendatory magistrates were appointed so i'm just looking through my notes here as i'm talking i would just i usually write a few bullet points to the side that just kind of help me rejig and put put all of this together um um, no, but here, here's something I want to discuss that I thought thought was very interesting. Look, an investigation in County Cork in 1815 reveals that many magistrates they were they were brewers, they were distillers, they were black rent landlords. Okay, and they encouraged excessive drinking and faction fighting. Faction fighting were usually done about markets and fairs, and people were drinking. So these magistrates you know, they had a hand in it. They had a hand in the booze. So they wanted to sell their booze to all of these guys. They were renting to these various tenants. So, you know, it was beneficial to them to encourage the uh, the, the faction fighting. I thought that was, that was quite interesting. There's also, um, during a House of Commons Select Committee inquiry in County Cork in 1825, uh, Father Collins from Skibbereen, Forder Keeley from Mitchellstown testified that their magistrates accepted presence of produce or labour from fighters in return for legal immunity and clemency if caught fighting. <coughs> so I'll rephrase that. They bribed them. <laughs> you know, they said, you boys want to fight? Give me a bit of work for me there for free or, or, you know, give me something on the side there. Give me a bit of money. Give me, uh, you know, something there. So there's testimony there from two priests about how corrupt the magistrates were, um, about how they encouraged faction fighting, how they were selling booze and saw the opportunity, you know, the entrepreneur in them thought, why not, you know, try to make some, some money here from, uh, from them. Uh, so I, I thought that was, was, was quite, quite interesting as well. But like another thing too, to, to um, one last point before I go about the magistrates is that like, the magistrates were re were like registered on paper around Ireland, but half of them weren't weren't even there. Some of them were even dead. Like, so how could you could even police the region when you were dead? <laughs> like, uh, let me explain that a bit, because uh, like throughout Ireland, more than half of the four thousand one hundred and seventy five listed magistrates were not available for service. So imagine that over two thousand magistrates to say right. Magistrate, here's your area to be in charge of. You've been appointed. They weren't there, you know. There was there was no one in the region, so it was completely lawless. Like there's places of Ireland that had no one watching what was going on, and I think this helped the development of of the faction fighting and you know the, how it was in, encouraged as well. Like let me have some figures here as well. <clears throat> um, even of of that 475, when it was looked at. 537 magistrates who are listed uh, as being an active service duty were dead they were dead they were like how could they how could they you know control an area from the grave um let me have some more figures here um 311 just couldn't be arsed they just they had nothing to do with it as well and another one which I thought was very interesting, 1,335 of the magistrates for areas on a county level in Ireland, da, 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 big reveal, they were in England. They weren't even here. They just took back off there. Ah, we'll go back, back to England. It's a bit better there, like, at the time. So, you know, like, um, Peel, you know, came in, 24-year-old guy, all impressionistic, you know, wanting to change the world, wanting to be tough. Like, he saw all this and he pissed him off. Like, he, he wasn't happy with all of this. He he said, like, what's his, his thing there? He said, only fit persons are allowed to stay on the bench. And some areas would be, would be brief of justice and peace. So he's, he's talking there just about he needs people that, that are actually there doing their job. Um, he doesn't want anyone just to be kind of like, you know, not being there and stuff like that. So... I thought this was quite an interesting aspect to mention in today's video, just to kind of recap, uh, recap again, that, you know, there, there's many reasons and factors of why faction fighting developed. Like to, to many people, they think, why was it allowed? Why didn't, you know, the, the British come down and stop them? Why didn't the police stop them? Why didn't, it, you know, anyone stop them? Like, how did this go on for ages without anyone you know, taking taking notice of it. And again, look, you know, it was to do with how the structure of power was at the time. 
um, how those on a county level had an interest in selling things to the faction, how the faction paid bribes to get guys to, to, to look the, the other way. And again, look, the more I kind of developing into this, you can see like it's, it's the, the factions were like um, seen as a, a bit of a sporting event, a, a bit of fun uh, based on feuds. It, there's a very deep tradition in it as well. Um, they were not political fights. Um, people used to wheel at them and mock each other. There was music, there was, there was dancing. Um, big difference to like, you know, political unrest where people were unhappy and started rioting as well. And again, there's a lot of kind of confusion between between what is a faction fight and what is a different type of fight um, as as well. And again, that's that's uh, something that was really confused. Like on, on time, some faction fights were reported not as faction fights, but it didn't work the other way around. Like when there was a political riot over rents or over some injustice, like um, a lot of those things were were correctly reported at the, at the time. But look, I'll, I'll leave it there today. I just thought it interesting just to explain about magistrates and, and more on a county level about uh, how it developed. Thank you for watching.